Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we have Sandeep Nelwal from Matic with us on the channel today. So we're going to be talking through a bunch of cool stuff related to Matic, what it is, what to expect, just generally what the space is all about. Uh, so Sandeep, thanks for being on, on the phone here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Forrest, for inviting me here. I'm very glad to be here. Awesome, man. Question? Yep. For sure. So I think where I wanted to start is for, for everyone that might be watching that doesn't know what Matic is, what Matic is all about. Can you give that, you know, that VC pitch? How do you, how do you describe Matic to people? So uh, Matic Network is a layer two uh, platform which provides uh, various layer two uh, kind of uh, execution, uh, or decentralized execution approaches on the layer two. And we recently launched our mainnet uh, with our hybrid plasma and POS chains. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically why Matic, uh, like let's first explore that. So, you know, the, we all know that blockchains, uh, especially the Ethereum blockchain, which is by far the largest adopted blockchain, especially for related to smart contracts and dApps, uh, you know, that is a very, uh, that has a very low scalability right now. Ethereum blockchain can process only 13 to 15 transactions per second. It takes like 15 seconds to confirm the transactions. And mm -hmm. even bigger than that, the cost of doing transactions is very, very high. Although the security and decentralization is, is great, but the cost of doing transactions makes it almost infeasible for doing or for building dApps and games on top of it. Mm -hmm. So enter Matic. So Matic is basically a layer two uh, platform as I, as, as I briefly mentioned. So you can have, uh, you know, Ethereum, uh, kind of security on the layer two where, you know, the layer two actually, uh, in a very simple term for a layman term, you can think that layer two on, on Matic, uh, side chain, you have a layer two side chain, which is exactly like Ethereum. You can do your smart contracts, you can do, you know, your, uh, transactions and all that, but the validator layer of the Matic that actually keeps checkpointing, whatever is happening on the, on the side chain to the main chain. Mm -hmm. So that using that checkpoint, if side chain, although side chain is very decentralized, it has more than hundred validators to start with. But even then, you know, we believe Ethereum uh, blockchain is the final uh, authority. It's kind of the Supreme court, right? Mm -hmm. So if anything goes wrong, any arbitration needs to be done that comes to Ethereum main chain. So that's uh, kind of the basic idea. And then uh, this is the POS side chain I'm talking about also because we are a plasma plus POS. So what plasma mm -hmm. offers is, two main features to, to the use, to the users. So when you are building a plasma enabled application on Matic, uh, especially in the plasma is specially applicable for the assets. Uh, so what you do is that all your asset transitions, asset transfers from one body to another, those are very closely integrated with Ethereum. Again, in a very layman terms, you can think of it that Ethereum blockchain is actually having a final sort of record of, who owns what on the side chain. And if right. chain again goes wrong, because you know, we are talking about value transfers, for example, you transferred $1 million to somebody else. And then, you know, let's say it leads to collusion amongst the side chain actors and they end up doing something which is, which is not as per the consensus. You can actually come to Ethereum and claim your assets from Ethereum itself. That provides it the value level security. So, so these two things like plasma, which ensures the asset, so, uh, you know, safety on the layer two side chain and, mm -hmm. you know, it being a POS chain, you can deploy smart contracts also. And if some of those smart contracts become big enough, you can make them plasma very payable using predicates. That's, That's really interesting stuff. Yeah. And I think what, what people really might need to understand here is that when you start to do, you know, things off of a main chain, you start to do layer twos one of the big challenges is, is uh, you know, sharing state, you know, the state of transactions, the state of execution of a smart contract, but also being able to deal with finality. And so in this case, finality in, in from what you said, my understanding is that finality really occurs still on the Ethereum main chain. All the stuff that happens out in that layer two kind of gets fed back in for final validation in a sense uh, to reconcile yeah. on chain. Correct, correct. So you can, so we, in the layer two space, it's called apparent finality and the, you know, kind of a concrete finality, right? So mm -hmm. you divide it into two parts. So let's say on, on Matic network where you have a side chain and there's, there's a Ethereum, 
so every 10 minutes the checkpoint is going on to the main chain but even in these checkpoints the blockchain is being run by the side chain is being run by 100 plus validators right so it has a very decent level of finality over here because these validators yes. have a proof of stake which is logged on to the ethereum main chain if mm -hmm. they do anything wrong here they can be slashed on ethereum right so you get an apparent finality here so like which on matic is very very fast so you get a apparent penalty within 1.5 to 2 seconds which is like mm -hmm. if you are interacting with a dap on matic network you just click and then you know the the, the this, this this the one second block time and uh, you know you get the transaction uh, confirmed so for a user experience especially for a game or small payment micro payment kind of applications you can already see that the user experience becomes as good as you have in the in our you know modern day applications like in the web 2 applications that we say right mm -hmm. and then there is a concrete penalty every 10 minutes that is going on to ethereum also so for larger value transfers that becomes that might become very important so let's say if you are transferring 1 million dollars to somebody then you might want to wait let's say maybe 10 minutes uh, like like on bitcoin right so you wait for five six confirmation which is like one hour so on matic you yeah. can wait to do large transfer but generally that is not applicable for the uh, you know the, the games the applications that we want to see in blockchain right so yeah yeah that's a great point and i guess at the surface level what matic is all about is helping ethereum scale in a lot of different uh, use case avenues like gaming potentially like DeFi. Um, what drove you and the Matic team to go after this type of problem for the Ethereum network? Yeah, so basically, see, we, uh, you know, uh, the Matic's, my, my co-founder, Genty, he was one of the, uh, you know, uh, the, the research members in the, uh, the, the, the erstwhile plasma research group, right? So where Vitalik and Joseph Kuhn, which was started by Vitalik uh, and Joseph Kuhn, and uh, he was the first one who built uh, the first ever plasma MVP implementation. And uh, so, so basically we come from that background only. We were originally, uh, we wanted to do something on the, uh, you know, kind of real world application, having some mm -hmm. sort of a Twitter kind of application initially, a decentralized Twitter and things like that. But then we started searching and then CryptoKitty hit at that time. This is like end of 2017. And we realized that this infrastructure is, far, far away from uh, being practical for any, you know, kind of uh, serious application. So we mm -hmm. started researching into the uh, scalability part of things. And then, you know, we slowly realized that this is the first, uh, you know, puzzle to be solved uh, first, right? So, and still, I think in one next one or two years, uh, or maybe more, you know, blockchains will still remain in, in those solving of that scalability uh, kind of issues. And then beyond, uh, only beyond that, we can actually uh, think of, uh, uh, you know, real world applications, which can actually start gathering value. Yeah. For sure. And obviously almost every protocol and platform out there is trying to stay focused on addressing scalability as, a, as one of the major, I, I guess one of the major challenges for, for adoption and for different mm -hmm. use cases. I think even yeah. DeFi, even with the small, size of transactions and, and the low cost of execution for ERC 20s, ERC 677s, it's still getting a little heavy on the Ethereum network in terms of, of volume. And so I think there's a big need for this type of, of solution. Yeah, yeah. And and I actually uh, did a did a transfer today and I had to pay $1.5 for that transaction. Yeah. It was originally giving me like $4.5 and I was like, is it and that was like a you know a, a very critical contract which holds a lot of funds right so i was like is it my multi sig contract feeling that's why because you know when a contract uh, an ex contract execution errors out it shows you a higher gas and i was like i was i was for some time i was shit, I was shit scared and then i realized that actually the there is a, this kind of congestion right now yeah so it's it, but again uh, see ethereum uh, is 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 like still remains the most trusted uh, blockchain it, and we strong, strongly believe in, in that, that it is going to be the programmable money uh, kind of platform uh, because of the network effects of DeFi and everything we have. So primarily we, at this point in time, if you ask me, do we want like a large number of DeFi borrowing, lending uh, kind of applications on layer two, a Matic layer two, we are not sure because, you know, we don't want 
like millions and millions of dollars lying on layer yeah. two you have to rely on certain level of security but but you know you can but you can definitely build dexes for example mm-hmm. right so where the dexes people are doing massive transactions and all that so in d5 we are primarily targeting the dex kind of use cases we don't right now we we ourselves don't fully uh, believe that you know the borrowing and lending kind of uh, defi use cases should come but maybe micro payments is also yeah. one thing and so, and then currently by and large the defi space is purely focused on these lending borrowing you know getting interest kind of thing like whatever application you see some of the other is is like this the other part is the dexes side of thing where you you can have pools and you know you can provide liquidity on that pool pools and all that so uh, but there are other kind of upcoming uh, defi scenarios that we are seeing some people are trying to do that chit fund kind of things right those small small things especially in an emerging com- country like uh, you know india uh, or in africa people are exploring these micro financing kind of scenarios there you know these kind of uh, like a layer 2 in defi uh, might might make sense but i i i still like we are not like 100% convinced that defi or any layer 2 should be used when you are going to lock up let's say 100 million dollars into a smart contract ethereum yeah. is the for that yeah you read my mind i was actually that was the next place i was going to go is is how do you feel about the op- idea that defi could be pushed onto layer 2s and you know you already answered that but i i think it is very it's going to be very interesting to see how as defi grows and how on the main ethereum chain what kind of moves to layer 2s what stays on chain and then obviously ethereum 2.0 is going to be another big milestone in in seeing how all these different applications shake out so so how is matic looking at ethereum 2.0 and preparing for that inevitable uh, move over from pow to pos yeah so for us we we consider e- ethereum 2.0 as massively positive uh, advancement mm-hmm. so uh, but but there are some like people still don't know whether it's 1.5 years out whether it's going to be 2 years right now mm-hmm. whatever buzz we see is regarding the staking kind of thing right and especially the markets are heating up because you know staking relates to locking of supply and all that but on the sharding kind of things so, so basically e2.0 is expected to have a 64 shards for example and then mm-hmm. 64 shards each shard might have at max i think you know right now i mean right now i feel it should be somewhere around the current uh, you know uh, kind of tps of of the ethereum chain right now it's around 13 tps i'm assuming that even if it goes let's say 10 times or maybe up to 100 for one shard so 64 shards might end up giving you 6400 uh, transactions per second right and then you know our analysis is that the moment that uh, you know supply of the transaction goes up your you know demand also will go again here right and again there will be yeah. conditions scenarios right now most of the apps are just not building those kind of uh, experiences that they wanted to build because ethereum becomes too costly so we strongly believe that eventually even if like initially there will be a huge supply of uh, let's say you know extra dps right and but that also is going to be ha- going to come like shard after shard right so a few mm-hmm. shards will come up initially and then you know there's a, a gradual this thing so initially even if there is some uh, you know uh, su- surplus supply of these transactions on chain but the moment uh, the, uh, the the you know the, the network comes out fully and the developers start deploying again the congestion levels go there they will do will go there and also we when we see and talk about congestions right now we talk about let's say 1 dollar transaction or half a dollar transaction but if you see it even 10 cent transaction is a very high cost transaction if you are talking about a million user application even 1 cent transaction is a is a is a cost lot. transaction yeah. so so even then so that's why i feel that for these social networks building on uh, you know decentralized platforms these games uh, and you know things like that they will still require the business activity will require layer 2 and uh, there was also one more thing so one important thing that i've been thinking is that if you ask me and looking at the advent of defi and the way defi is growing the e2.0 will be purely consumed by the defi applications only and ideally it should be littered with defi applications and because that's what gives the ethereum the maximum value like the value accrual and you know the real uh, like uh, kind of programmable money kind of uh, this thing where it can even go beyond i don't know what bitcoin has been able to do 
if possible at all. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on DeFi. I think that there is a a vested interest in Ethereum from Ethereum's perspective to keep the uh, the platform itself friendly towards DeFi products and to give all the tools possible to make DeFi products more successful and safer as well. Um, so, to what end, you know, from Matic's perspective? Are you, is your strategy changed because of ETH 2.0 or are you pretty much staying the course and your, your, your deployments, your mainnet, everything's going to kind of stay the same? Yeah. Yeah. For us, like our mainnet is already went live on yep. the 30th of the and, uh, you know, going forward also, we believe that when ETH 2 comes up, our scalability is also going to be easier, right? Because our network also checkpoints into Ethereum, right? So, and one mm -hmm. single checkpoint costs us around $4. So, when the, when the, let's say, ETH 2.0 comes in, our checkpointing costs also go down and, and the miners and the, like the proof of stake miners can be more uh, cash positive and their expenses go down. So it's actually a good thing. And then Matic, as I told you, that Matic sidechain is only one form of decentralized execution that we are providing. We expect to provide things like optimistic rollups, uh, you know, different kind of solution like the Zero, ZK rollups and all that. So although, you know, the, strategy still needs to be formulated, but we want to be a generalized layer two platform. If you see the first, uh, you know, solution from our side only, it already looks uh, like it's, it's more of a POS plus plasma. Generally people mm -hmm. are either doing POS or they are doing plasma in one extreme or the other. We wanted to have a more pragmatic uh, kind of solution. And that is exactly why you see a large number of applications, the bigger ones, the smaller ones, all choosing like many choosing Matic as their uh, blockchain platform. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys have had a lot of attention and, you know, deservedly so a, a lot of, you know, the people in the developer community kind of pointing in your direction, which is, which is really good. And congratulations on the mainnet, by the way. Um, so just going to that mainnet a little bit, what is, you know, what does the mainnet look like now? And then what is next for you? So where is, where does development go from here? Yeah. So right now our mainnet, uh, you know, has been launched with the initial set of validators. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we are expecting to initiate the staking, the, the stage one of staking, uh, like delegations by the, uh, you know, public to the network and where they understand and get educated by the, for the staking network, uh, like how to delegate their tokens and everything. Then uh, from there, uh, we'll move into the, uh, you know, like onboarding and we are doing a phase wise onboarding. So maybe around 29th, once the staking uh, and delegation is live, then we expect uh, the, the, the external validators, like maybe 10, 20 initially joined the network. And then, you know, once the network is running live with 30, 35, uh, you know, uh, nodes, public nodes, then we, you know, kind of take a step back and then open it up for the entire public, this, uh, you know, this thing, and then completely uh, shut down any foundation nodes that we, we'd be running. And, you know, the network becomes fully decentralized. So that's the first, and it's going to be like, uh, you know, playing out in the next, uh, you know, few weeks. And uh, apart from that, uh, you know, the, 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 the focus will, will definitely, it's already ongoing in a parallel uh, for, uh, you know, uh, things like, uh, you know, the developer tooling and everything that we are building, uh, the plug plugins to do this thing. But apart from that, we also, as I, as I said, that we want to offer more, uh, you know, layer two approaches to our uh, developers they, that they can pick and choose. Like, for example, currently they can choose to be a pure POS or they can choose POS plus plasma. Future, we want them to be able to choose more such layer two approaches, which is suitable for their uh, this thing. And which also brings me to the point that where we are also targeting now enterprises. Like, you know, recently we announced a very strong partnership with Infosys. And we're talking to a lot of large enterprises. So we want them because, you know, uh, a lot of like, especially Ernst & Young, for example, they have, uh, you know, started taking and, and a lot of efforts from the consensus side also. They started taking these positions that, uh, you know, the private blockchains are not really blockchains. And, yeah. uh, you know, they're more like glorified databases. And then eventually whatever, uh, you know, whatever value accruing use cases like, or uh, what should I call like a legitimate use case that will break out in the production levels for enterprises will have some sort of the other public blockchain bindings. Right. And yeah. one, and these side chains become a very interesting proposition for, 
uh, you know, enterprises also. So enterprises also are like a very big front for us, and uh, we are trying to you know uh, do as much as we can on that front also. Yeah, I think it's a smart move because there's a lot of there's a lot of appetite in, in enterprise that I think doesn't come to fruition mostly because a lot of places don't know where to start. And from a talent perspective, there's not a lot of talent out there to help enterprises internally start to, to make these decisions and start working through this stuff. So yeah. um, I think it's great. There are, you know, a lot of, a lot of projects now that are starting to take a, a, a crack at not just saying, here's a blockchain as a service, go crazy. It's more so here are tools to help you make blockchain solutions that are useful. Uh, and, and I love right. that. And, and so, then, you know, even in the larger space, we all often joke that right now there are 100 protocols and there are only 10 developers, right? So you, yeah. you see it so, and you know, I should not, uh, you know, use the word, but you know, you so many shit coins out, out there, right? You know, everybody trying to build a, some sort of a platform and all that. There are some legit projects, of course, they are you know, having some very solid approaches, but many of the projects, like you, we know that there are hundreds and hundreds especially in 2017, 18, you know, which is mm -hmm. a lot of you know, that stuff. So, uh, so we, so ent with enterprise, you use the right word. There's a lot of appetite from, uh, you know, enterprises. And that's where we feel is an endless source of, you know, adoption for you. In the mm -hmm. current state that the open source developers, you know, the, the funding space is very, very weak for them. And till, till the time, few applications, like for example, Audius, or some other top applications breaks out really and you know acquires a billion dollar uh, you know kind of uh, billion dollar kind of valuation till then till that time we are not going to see too many developers you know we think that there are a lot of developers but an interesting statistics i read that on android and iphone the success to uh, you know failure ratio is like 10000 to 1 you have 10000 applications out of them one application is able to really break out and mm -hmm. if you see the entire blockchain space, the entire the total number of applications that are built on Ethereum, Tron, and EOS, like which are supposed to be Ethereum has like 2,600 applications in total, and then Tron has uh, 700 applications and EOS has 300. So we have total 3,600 applications, right? And we are yeah. expecting multiple billion dollar uh, you know dApps from there. It's it's not gonna happen. We need <laughs> you know million yeah. of developers uh, over here. Yeah, we're like on we're like on a beta version of iOS in 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 relativity. It's like we're not even we're not even there yet, and, yeah. and that and I, I think is great. Interesting, interesting thing you mentioned iOS on the on that front because somebody was quoting me that even if iOS was available, I'm not sure about these dates exactly, but he was quoting me that you know even if iOS was available by 2006 2007, but it was only around 2011 2012 after five years when apps really started breaking out and then once few apps, you know, made a lot of money, then there was a, like the floodgates got open. So. Yeah. I mean, and there's a relationship between hardware, firmware, and then software on top in iOS and app stores, the same way that there is for blockchain. Like there are theoretical limits to what you can build with the technology we have now. And some of the, the, the restraint, or sorry, constraints for consensus mechanisms are hardware based. And so it's like, it's another full circle, full cycle that we have to go through to get to the point where it's mainstream. And that's, it's refreshing to hear that, you know, in the, in the industry more, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I think this, this revolution, I always talk, often talk to people and say that this, like, like the internet revolution, like which, which, you know, became like really big in 1998, 99, that was driven by developers that, okay, you know, you can shop offline, you can shop online, you can play offline, you can play games online and things like that. Right. So whatever in real life was possible, uh, you know, they more like you have friends in the real life, let's have social networks on the, on the, on the, on the internet and all that. So, but this revolution, I feel because internet is already there, this evolution will be more driven by the users. We already are seeing that the institutional trust is, is at all time low. Right. And, you know, once the once once the industry in terms of the infrastructure improves to a level where let's say I don't know how many years from now, but if you have a if you have a valid uh, you know good enough UI UX competitor to Facebook or let's say to Twitter where you know that it's decentralized and everything, like and then as a user you have two options to choose from, both equally good, equally this thing, then I think like there's a good chance of 
these breaking out like the decentralized twitter decentralized facebook decentralized whatsapp kind of trying to break out into the network and that would be the most interesting way. i don't know how far out we are maybe five years maybe two years maybe 10 years who knows like it's impossible to tell especially because it's all like it's all like science it's serendipity someone could come up with something that just works and that could be next year or next week and we, we don't know yeah absolutely absolutely same same case with the games also we say that if one game one big 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 uh, you know gaming company is able to build a large gaming economy multi billion dollar economy then there will be floodgates everybody will try to copy that same model and that will become the norm yeah it could happen and i think gaming is a big i think gaming is a, is a a, a huge potential arbiter for adoption in, in this space, not even necessarily just for money, because I know people talk about money flowing in. I want users to flow in before I want money to flow in personally. And I think everyone has different opinions on that, but maybe even specific, like specifically for Matic, we talked about gaming as a potential, you know, heavy hitter use case for you, like reconciling transactions for game, you know, game items and such. Is that something that you guys are thinking about? Yeah, yeah. So gaming is already, you know, fairly uh, big with Matic. Like, you know, I think in terms of gaming, we can, we might be already one of the, you know, largest, uh, you know, like largest growing, fastest growing space. Tron might have more applications than us, but, uh, you know, we are growing very, very fast on that one. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, th th I mean, that's, that remains a very important area for us. Gaming, dApps, uh, real world use cases like people building some ad exchanges or you know free to use Wi-Fi is using a network of uh, routers and things like that so yeah I mean those are the things which we are you know more more bullish about awesome so uh, you know we're coming up on time but I wanted to talk really quickly about what's what's next for for Matic where you guys are going from here uh, you know what's on the the within line of sight roadmap for you so for us, uh, you know, the important things are uh, first, uh, you know, our uh, staking going live and, you know, network becoming fully decentralized uh, and then, you know, fully staked network, a fully secure network, mm -hmm. uh, a proof of stake network. And then, uh, you know, on the adoption side, we are already doing, we, we are going to do a very massive developer push very shortly now, uh, you know, in terms of a large scale campaigns. We recently launched a fund with the Decentraland to support gaming on Decentland, right? So that's that's there. And uh, then from there, you know, as I as I said that, you know, providing more approaches, more layer two approaches, that means more main nets, right? So mm -hmm. because we are layer two, so there is no single main net for, for Matic, to be honest, like in that sense. So there can be more, uh, you know, main nets and more such offerings, which, uh, you know, people are looking or the users would be looking for. And, uh, you know, so, so those are things. And then on the, on the larger scale adoption fund, we have the, uh, you know, enterprises uh, coming in. So, uh, you know, enterprise related offerings is the, is the, is the la other larger uh, frontier for us. So, you know, some of these big things that we are expecting in the, in the coming days, coming months. Yeah, to be precise. Awesome. It sounds like uh, you guys have a full plate and when, when the, uh, when the developer push comes, let me know. I'll uh, I'll jump in that and I'll I'll uh, I'll build something. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, you you can you can you can start even now also. Uh, whenever you have like more time, just uh, you know come around and play with it. I'm pretty sure that you would like the because if you would have built on Ethereum, you would know. Like we on uh, at times say that if you are an Ethereum developer, you're already a Matic developer. And you know, Pentera, uh, you know, founder uh, Joe. Uh, you know, Joey Krug has also had also said in one podcast that you know, if you, if I'm a developer, somebody asked him that who are the projects which are not in your portfolio but you still like them. So he mm -hmm. talked. He said that Matic Network is one of them. And uh, he when when asked why, he said that if you are if you're going to a developer and going to tell him that okay, you you can build this on this fast blockchain, but you have to learn a new programming language and it will be a two months of efforts. Nobody is going to do that, right? So yeah. Uh, and you know, when you can go to a developer and they have they know already. They already know how to build on it, and they have all the tools. All of them similar, you know, same, same, uh, you know, are applied. So if you have an existing built application, just try and see deploying it on uh, on Matic. Like it, it deploys like a charm, right? So everything is cool. straightforward. Your Web three tools, wallets, everything work uh, out of the box. So 
you know, so that's why we are very bullish on the developer side already doing pretty good over there. Yeah. Definitely. I can attest if it, if it requires new skills, it's going to take me way longer to build because I have a job, I have a day job and I have a bunch of other stuff going on. So totally, exactly. totally correct. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much, Sandeep, for stopping by, talking about Matic. We'll have to do this again soon as well, just to you know keep updated on what's going on. And uh, I'll play around with I'll play around with Matic too. I'll try and deploy a couple smart contracts and just see how how everything works. Thank you so much. Yeah.